Welcome to the UGC EPG Pathshala lecture series in computer science. In this series of lectures, we have been looking at a subject software engineering. In this particular session, I will be continuing on the agile software development methodologies. Since we are talking about software development life cycle models, the entire objectives are the same as it was in the previous sessions. So, we have to ensure high quality software that is to be developed. We may have to provide strong management controls to look at maximizing the productivity of the work. In continuation of my previous session, I have been talking about extreme programming where I have talked about uh, metaphors at the end. So, after metaphors, we may have to look at small releases. So, like every sprint or once in 15 days, we may have to release a simple version of a product. So, that might be helpful for the customer to review on what exactly has happened. So, the time between the rele releases drastically gets reduced rather than talking about 6 months or 1 year's time span. So, this happens in different multiple iterations. So, there will be a lot of iterations that would tune on the entire work since the active involvement of customer also plays a vital role. So, can have intermediate iterations between bigger releases. One of the advantage of this XP methodology is by providing test first programming, where we have unit, unit testing frequently done by the developers and acceptance testing done subsequently by the customers. And these acceptance tests are not majorly concentrated uh, at the uh, towards the end of the product development as like the traditional approach. This approach talks about first doing the unit testing by the uh, developers followed by the acceptance testing by the customers. The major advantage of working towards these agile practices focuses on sim creating simple designs where the design should be quick and not elaborate pick the simplest thing that could possibly work, resist adding too much of stuff which are not ready yet. The other thing we may have to majorly focus would be on the refactoring principle. So, when we are about to refactor it, code gets worse with add-on features as and when I try to provide more amount of features, my coding becomes worse because I cannot insert every line of code in between although it has been viewed by my peer reviewer or uh, my peer programmer. So, difficulty arises during bug fixes also. So, please do rewrite on small sections of the code very regularly, rerun all unit tests to know nothing gets broken. It means you should have designed comprehensive tests. Focus more on pair programming where subsequent testing is being handled during the phase of development of the work. And we may have to have a collective ownership since the customer and the developer are actively involved towards the development of the entire work. So, anyone can edit anything, errors are the fault of the whole team. It again focuses on a continuous integration process where the commit changes are frequently been done several times a particular day, verify against entire test suite and we may have to adopt a coding standard which enables effective teamwork. Although we have done so much of very good quantum of work, the entire quantum of work should run through a sustainable pace. That means, so after subsequent times or if equal interval of time, we may have to produce very good effective quality work. So, no overtime, only exceptions in final week, good estimation skills for budgeting which will help ensure reasonable time frames, plan time each day for administrative work by taking appropriate breaks. So, this is often been ensured primarily because as I have indicated in my previous sessions, mainly the developers are not intended to provide the exact product within time and it is overruns the entire budget. So, now that it is with the active involvement of the customer, the entire product is being developed. So, the customers better know 
what are the features that they require well in advance and what are the features that can be given lowest priority. And at sustainable pace the same work can be developed and it can be produced as and when required. So, this is our overall agile scrum process work in a nutshell. So, this gives a complete picture of how the entire work is being carried out. If you look at the entire picture, it flows through a process from starting from 1 till 14. So, on until all these 14 stages, every stage is being completely working on individual tasks. If you look at task 1, where the initial project is being conceived and the vision of the entire work is being derived. So, we may have to share on the vision and the vision is being modularized into user stories that is being taken up as work 2 and these user stories are getting stored based upon their priority which will be kept track simultaneously based on the levels of priority. So, these mentions the levels of priority from low to high. These user stories are aligned in a similar fashion which is required at what date. So, highest priority things are taken up in the beginning with the effective consultation of the customer and this alignment is called as product backlog. This has been done at the third stage and as a fourth stage we may have to organize all the product backlogs into a sprint backlog where at equal interval of time for maintaining the sustainable pace which work need to be understood and planned first. So, planning the sprint is taken up at task 5, at task 6 it is all in the detail. So, we may have to go look at the entire feature in detail by looking at the priority of the job. Then this has been pushed towards ready to build phase. So far it has been into the analysis phase and once after the sprint backlog is over, it has been pushed towards the build phase where exactly we start the sprint cycle. And at every sprint cycle, we may have to conduct a stand up regular stand up meetings which can happen daily. In these stand up meetings, we will discuss on what the particular developer has concentrated on the previous day and what he is planning to work on today and what are the drawbacks or the, what are the uh, major problems that he could encounter on today's work which the other members of that particular project would help. So, that would be major concentration on task 8 and in task 9 the sprint after the sprint cycle one simple version of a product after a simple design will be delivered and this will be shown for a final delivery and interim deliverables will be tested and if it is not properly been working, the user stories are collected again, it, the cycle repeats and uh, once after completion of all the intermediate tasks, then I will take it for the final delivery. And during the final delivery, I will rinse, repeat and say I have completely worked on this. This is the effective product that will be delivered. So, the, the finished product will be delivered only at stage 14. This picture gives you a complete explanation of how the scrum process really would work. So, having introduced the word of scrum, this is also an agile methodology but we have looked at XP practices that is extreme programming practices as a previous practice, as a previous software development life cycle. And now that we are about to look at Scrum. So, we will look at some of the history of the Scrum where the idea first appeared in a business journal in 1986 applied to a product development management system. This Scrum is used in software development and presented in 1995 a technical paper. And the word scrum that appeared from a playing game called rugby, there they used the term scrum. So, this has been applied on small cross functional teams. So, the major things that the scrum would take up is on a product backlog, sprint backlog and repetitive iterations where, where 
daily scrum meetings would happen and potentially shippable product will be incrementally being given as a finished good. So, these are the major things which scrum practices on. So, this can be compared with the figure that I have shown in the previous state. Once after I take the entire product, I would come out with a clear vision on what kind of project need to be developed. If it is found to be unique, I need to collect the user stories. These user stories are being prioritized and those are supposed to be as a product back backlog. From the product backlog, I take every user stories which will be collected as print backlog and it will be reviewed in over several meetings iteratively. Now that between the scrum, we will compare sequential and overlapping development. So, that is between a traditional development and a scrum based development. During the phase of traditional development, we will work on requirements, design, code and test. So, rather than doing it all of one thing at a time, scrum team does a little of everything all the time. So, it takes up requirements as a small task, design as a simple task, coding being taken, parallelly it is being tested unit wise and acceptance wise. So, it is being conceived parallelly as a simplest task. If you look at this scrum framework, there are different things that appear towards working on scrum. The first thing is on the roles. What are the major roles that the scrum focuses on is on the product owner scrum master and the team. These will be the roles that will be assigned on the scrum framework. Next looking at the ceremonies, it, we will be talking about sprint planning, sprint review, sprint retrospective, daily scrum meetings and finally the artifacts that are the things that are to be produced by people involved in the process. These artifacts will be in the form of product backlog sprint backlog and burn down charts which will ex exactly predict on when I would complete on what. Now that we will understand the different roles that would effectively comprise on the scrum practices. The first role is on the product owner who is supposed to be a product owner. These product owners defines the features of the product. So, anybody who is supposed to be a customer would be called a product owner and his basic task will be to define the features that are to be provided on this particular product. He decides on the release date and the content that should be delivered on that particular date. He is responsible for the profitability of the product. He looks after return on investment. The ROI that I have presented here mentions on the return on investment. So, overall profitability that is look after in the project needs to be better understood by the customer or the product owner. So, he prioritizes the features by mentioning low prior, high prior, medium prior works. So, he prioritizes the features according to the market value being given, adjust features and priority every iteration as and when needed, accepts or rejects work results. So, once it is been unit tested by the developer since the active involvement of the product owner is on the entire development. If he accepts and sees this, if it does not flow through the acceptance testing in short, he, he has every right to reject that particular phase of development in its own cycle. The second role is on the scrum master. This scrum master represents the management to the project. This scrum master is basically responsible for enacting scrum values and practices. So, he is the person who makes all the team members to think, collaborate, understand, motivate. So, the basic responsibility of the scrum master is to understand, make the developers understand on what they are about to work. So, this person completely removes on the impediments, ensure that the team is fully functional and productive all the time enable co close cooperation across all roles and functionalities that is the effective collaboration of the team, shield the team from external interferences that is to constantly keep up their mood, 
understand the basic infrastructure facility being given without any hindrances and disturbances, how the team can effectively produce on the delivery. Next work or the next on the chart would be on the team. Basically, for the scrum practices, there will be around 5 to 9 people who are aligned as a team member. As it is mentioned, it behaves on a cross-functional manner where there will be an equal composition of programmers, testers, user experience designers to effectively design on the interfaces and so. So, members of this particular team cannot be like a consultant, they are supposed to be of a full time people actively involved towards this project development or user story feature based development and working towards this team, these team members have to work converting all the team activities into sprint goal and backlogs. So, the entire capacity of 5 to 9 people have to be given as input. I will look at all the features which are provided by my product owner. I will look at those business conditions that my project own, product owner uh, gives me as a constraint. The current product and the technologies that are available also to be taken care of. Conduct sprint planning meeting. Once after the sprint planning meeting is over, we may have to deliver a sprint goal and a sprint backlog, which clearly mentions on how this is variant from the regular or the traditional work that is available right now as an application. So, during the sprint planning meeting, I will be giving highest priority to the sprint in terms of analyzing and evaluating the product backlog, coming out with the derivative of selecting the sprint goals and clearly picturizing on the sprint plan. The sprint plan concentrates on deciding how to achieve sprint goal, creating sprint backlog in terms of task to develop the finished product from product backlog items like user stories or features, estimate sprint backlog mostly in terms of hours. So, after passing through this particular process, this delivers goals that are to be assigned towards developing the sprint and the backlog of the sprint. Now that we will look at the practices that are to be inculcated when we work on the scrum, the sprint is a maximum or it is approximately to one month period after which some product is to be delivered. It can be maximum to a one month period it can start even from 15 days. Feature, features are basically assigned from the product backlog to a sprint backlog. Features are divided into smaller tasks as we have been calling it as modules in our traditional approaches. Now that we will call it as features for every sprint backlog. Feature list is fixed for every sprint. So, once after we have assigned, we have taken some user stories, we have worked on that sprint and if it has been assigned for that particular sprint backlog, these are fixed. Subsequently, it goes towards planning meeting where the task can be assigned to all the team members. Team members have individual estimates of time that is to be taken for every feature that they are about to work with. During every sprint, work through the features and keep a burn down chart for every sprint. New functionalities is produced by the end of the sprint. Once after the customer feels or the product owner feels that there should be additional features that should be incorporated on the existing ones that can happen only after the current sprint backlog is over. After every sprint, there is a review meeting that should evaluate on this sprint with the help of scrum masters and with the help of product owners. During sprint planning, the team selects items from the product backlog, they can commit to completing stage. The sprint backlog is completely created by independent tasks. These tasks are identified and each is estimated for 1 to 16 hours maximum since the sprint iteration is for 
1 to 15 days or once in a day, 1 to 16 hours maximum. So, this has to be collaboratively been planned, not done alone by the scrum master himself. Whereas, during the traditional approaches, either the team leader or the project manager is given the highest importance. So, whatever they wish to say to us, we may have to strictly plan to their case. Here, there is nobody like that. The entire task is given to the team itself and it is a responsibility of scrum master to look at or to motivate them to achieve this particular task within the time frame. The scrum master need not be the same person throughout the development of the task, the scrum master can change. So, this is supposed to be the highest level of design that is to be considered. So, we create a design in this format, it is all a small uh, charts that we paste, stick it on a, uh, uh, on a board and we discuss it for every day's stand up meeting. So, we take up what are the works that has been defined initially and what is that I have considered for in progress and what has been completed and what has been accepted by my product owner. So, everything has been categorized and been approved so as to give a delivery of the product. So, if you look at the picture that I have given here, these are the scrum practices that are being taken up as a stand up meeting every day. So, as a scrum meeting, it is a 15 minute daily meeting conducted routinely every day and all team members of that particular product development show up to the scrum meeting. They quickly mention on what they did since last scrum, any obstacles that they have encountered, what they will do next. Some team member volunteers or is appointed to be a scrum master. One of the person from the team will be assigned as a scrum master, it, he need not be the scrum master always. The basic responsibility of the scrum master is to see the issues that are raised or get addressed by the customers, management encouraged to observe. So, anything the customer points out at that particular juncture, the management's with the management's intervention, if it is to be encouraged and it should be incorporated, once after the sprint is completed, the entire team is supposed to add those features also into its development. During the sprint review, the team presents what is accomplished during the sprint, typically takes the form of a demo of new feature or underlying architecture. This happens informally to us preparation time rule and there is no slide presentation which talks about what has been happened. It is just by simple charts that is projected with saying what has been done since last scrum meeting. It invites whole team for participation and invites the world that is including the product owner for its subsequent happening. Another phase which happens which is called sprint retrospective. This happens periodically to have a look at what is and is not working. So, this typically takes 15 to 30 minutes per day done after every sprint. Whole team participates that is the scrum master, product owner, team, possibly the customers and others can also participate and they can majorly decide on whether I should start doing on the same set of features any further or I can stop doing or I can go with the same pace by continuing further. This retrospective meeting gives me clear understanding of the uh, greens which indicates on what went well and the reds what could be improved. So, the team gives gets a clear picture of with the development of those features what has gone well is also been understood and what should have been improvised is also been understood because of this retrospectives. Then it comes to product and release backlog. A list of features to be implemented in the project are being ordered by priority for its subsequent release. It can get adjusted over time as needed based on the feedback provided. A product manager is responsible for maintaining the complete list of backlogs and he is supposed to deliver it on time. 
So if you look at the product backlogs, these product backlogs are being assigned depending on its priority. If this is to be given highest priority, it should be considered for sprint backlog. Then once in every 4 weeks, that is a month, maximum of 1 month, I will conduct daily meetings, I will conduct some sprint burn down chart. This happens retrospectively and the release happens after successful sprint review meeting. This is a simple sprint backlog chart where the tasks are clearly being highlighted. Say for example, these are individual features that are to be highlighted, code the user interface, code the middle tire, test the middle tire, write online help, write the foo class, add error logging. So this maximum requires 8 hours on Monday, 4 hours on Tuesday, 8 hours on Wednesday. Likewise, this has been given concentration. So the table that I have indicated in the previous slide indicates on the burn down chart which gives us a clear understanding on the best estimate of time to complete what is currently in the backlog. So plot the time on a chart, by studying the chart we understand how the team functions, ensure the burn down to 0 at completion time. So now that we have multiple activities to be done in parallel, so we may have to ensure that this burn down chart comes to a 0 that is a completion stage by adjusting what is in the backlog by adjusting the completion date. So after looking at the sprint practices burn down chart, this is supposed to be the estimate where the x axis concentrate on the month that I am working with and the total number of hours, hours. Say for example on 29th April, I have been working for say these many number of hours which got increased over the time and slowly all my tasks which have been which I have been trying to do comes to a zero state. So in summary in this particular session I have started talking about XP practices then we have started with another agile methodology which is scrum the basic name of scrum came from a game a popular game called rugby here we have talked about the different practices that we have on the scrum, roles of the scrum basically to talk about the product owner rather than a customer, scrum master rather than managing it as team leader or project manager and the team. Then after having completely drafted on the vision, we have come across deriving the features of the development in terms of simpler modules. Instead of saying modules, we call it as user stories. These user stories are initially getting stored based up depending on the priority on a product backlog. Then from the product backlog, it is conceived to a sprint backlog and it goes through a phase of a retrospective sprint meetings. Stand up meetings done happens, uh, does happen every day and the sprint meetings happens maximum within a month and after successful sprint reviews, this has been completely delivered in an effective manner. Thank you.